planet Earth is home to 8 billion people, and in 13 years, there will be 9 billion. But despite the UN recognizing 193 sovereign nations, 4.1 billion, or over half of all humans, live in just 7 countries. Why? Find out in... And let's hit 10,000 likes for a video ranking every country from worst to best. Number 7. Brazil. When Brazil declared independence 200 years ago, its population was a mere 4 million. Which makes sense considering 60% of it is blanketed by the Amazon rainforest, one of the most inhospitable ecosystems on Earth. How then did its population grow 50 times over in less than two centuries to 203 million today? Well, Brazil spans 8.46 million square kilometers. So although just 6.7% of it is arable, that's still 570,000 square kilometers, which is the fifth most total arable land of any country. And the soil's elevation and climate of Sao Paulo and Paraná are perfect for the cultivation of sugarcane and coffee. So when the Portuguese colonized Brazil in the 1500s, they built massive plantations and imported 5.5 million enslaved Africans to work them, which was 10 times as many slaves as were brought to the U.S. And since the agrarian economy so heavily relied on slave labor, when slavery was abolished in 1888, Brazil enticed millions of poor immigrants from Europe and the Middle East to work the farms, followed by the largest Japanese diaspora due to the U.S. and Canada banning Japanese immigrants for three decades. This combined with a fertility rate of six births per woman in until the 1970s led to a population explosion from just 17 million in 1900 to 119 million by 1980. And as the nation rapidly industrialized, the economy followed suit, with massive rural migration to the cities in search of better jobs, transforming Brazil from an 84% rural nation in 1930 to an 88% urban one today. But because nearly every society that urbanizes experiences families waiting longer before having less children, Brazil's fertility rate has dropped to just 1.6 births per woman, meaning its population will likely start to decline within 20 years. Number 6. Nigeria. At 910,000 square kilometers, Nigeria is one-ninth the size of Brazil, yet it has 20 million more residents. Why? Especially considering that 63% of Nigerians live in extreme poverty, with the nationwide GDP being less than Denmark's, a country of just 5.9 million residents? Well, because Nigeria has one of the highest rates of teen marriage, with 43% of Nigerian girls marrying before the age of 18, and 16% before 15. This is culminating in the seventh highest fertility rate of any nation at 5.1 births per woman, as on average, women who marry earlier disproportionately bear more children. And while the mass rural migration to Lagos over the past 60 years has led to fertility rates dropping, with the average woman in Africa's most populous megacity only having 3.4 births, 46% of the nation still lives rurally, the majority of whom are the polygamous Hausa people in the north, who practice a form of Islam that allows a man to take four wives. And since only 5% of them use contraception, it's not uncommon for a family to have 20 or even 30 children, with the overall fertility rate in northern Nigeria being over 8 births per woman. So with improvements in medicine and cleanliness over the past 30 years leading to less premature death, the population has skyrocketed from just 88 million in 1990 to 223.8 million today. And yes, Nigeria still has the second lowest life expectancy of only 53.9 years and the 14th worst infant mortality rate, but considering average life expectancy 50 years ago was under 40, it's actually a huge improvement. And with the median age still being just 17.2 years, Nigeria's exponential growth seemingly has no end in sight, with the population projected to reach 377 million by 2050. Number 5. Pakistan. Despite 60% of it being covered by desert or mountains, modern-day Pakistan housed one of the most important cradles of civilization the Indus Valley, because the other 40% of the nation is some of the greatest agricultural land on Earth. But history in the Indus River Delta aren't the only reasons 241.5 million people live in this country that's roughly the size of Namibia, a nation with one one-hundredth its population. The main reason it's jumped from the 16th most populous nation with 33.7 million residents in 1951 to the 5th most populous today is that people just won't stop having kids. Despite Karachi and Lahore's status as massive megacities, 61% of Pakistanis still live rurally, meaning there's 
there's a strong cultural emphasis on large families due to more children increasing the likelihood that one or a few of them make it to adulthood. Not to mention, 96.5% of the country is Muslim, and Muslims are the religious group who, on average, have the most children, with 2.9 kids per Muslim woman versus 2.2 for non-Muslims. As such, when Pakistan started receiving proper sanitation, nutrition, and healthcare in the 1960s, life expectancy and infant survival rates surged significantly, as did the population, reaching 65.3 million in 1972 and 132.4 million by 1998. The government saw overpopulation becoming a huge concern and tried implementing education reform. As educated people typically wait longer to marry, an age at marriage is the most important determinant of how many births a woman bears. But although it was partially successful, with the average female age at marriage rising from 18.6 years in 1991 to 23.2 years today, nearly halving the fertility rate, Pakistan is still not very educated, with less than 60% of adults being literate, only 30 30% using contraception, and the world's largest amount of out-of-school children. So it's on track to become the third most populous nation by 2050, with a projected 403 million residents. Number 4. Indonesia. Spanning 18,000 islands, they cover an area slightly larger than Alaska, which houses just 730,000 residents. Indonesia is home to 279 million. But that's a bit deceptive, because 152 million people, or 54% of the population, lives only on Java. No, not the coding language. The island, which, despite covering an area smaller than Mississippi, would be the 8th most populous nation on its own. The reason? Because its tropical climate and rainfall patterns, combined with 45 active volcanoes which produce some of the richest soil on Earth, make Java the most perfect land known to man when it comes to the year-round cultivation of countless cash crops. So when the Dutch colonized the islands in the 1600s, they established their headquarters on Java, and by 1800 it was a center of coffee, tea, rubber, palm oil, and spices. And because it's been the most populous island ever since, when Indonesia industrial during the 1970s and 80s, most of the factories were built in the cities on Java, resulting in the island's already disproportionately large population becoming even more disproportionately populated. The nation transformed from an 82% rural society in 1970 to a 58% urban society today. And conversely, the fertility rate of over 5 births per woman halved to just 2.5 by 2000. So while the population nearly tripled from 60 million residents in 1930 to 179 million by 1990, its growth has slowed drastically in recent years, with the nation only expected to add 9 million more residents by 2050. Now before we get to the final three, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and comment which of these nations surprised you the most. And while it doesn't need to be included for these seven countries to contain over half the world's population, I wanted to give an honorable mention to Bangladesh, the eighth most populous nation with 170 million residents, which is also the most densely populated non-microstate with 1,267 people per square kilometer. Because nearly the entire nation sits on the Ganges and Brahma Putra River Deltas, two of the largest rivers on Earth. And with the mighty Himalayas shielding it from any cool Arctic winds, Bangladesh is the most suitable nation for agriculture, with 60% of the country considered arable. So as I'm sure you can guess, it's always been populated. And since 92% of Bengalis still lived rurally when Bangladesh gained independence from Pakistan in 1971, the fertility rate was greater than 7 births per woman, leading to exponential population growth once life expectancy grew. Unlike Pakistan, however, the government was remarkably successful in educating the populace, even giving a stipend to parents who sent a daughter to school. As a result, contraception use rose from 7% in 1975 to 72% today, the fertility rate dropped to just two births per woman, and Bangladesh became South Asia's fastest growing economy. Number three, the United States of America. The United States is the only nation on this list which was not a majority rural society a century ago. And it's one of a kind not only in how it became so populated, but also in how uniquely diverse its population is. Because while the majority of its growth from just 250,000 residents in 1700 to 5 million by 1800 was driven by natural increase, in 1815, the U.S. embraced being the nation of immigrants, welcoming 5 million by 1800 
1860 and another 12 million by 1890, which, coinciding with the Second Industrial Revolution, led to it becoming the world's largest economy that same year. The population rose to 76.3 million by 1900, and as the nation increasingly developed, becoming a majority urban society by 1920, 18 million more immigrants arrived. Now, immigration and birth rates came to a crawl during the Great Depression, with the average woman having just 2.2 births. But the economic prosperity following World War II, combined with eager soldiers returning home to their wives for the first time in years, resulted in the single largest generation in U.S. history, with the fertility rate jumping to 3.6 births per woman and 76 million baby boomers born. And although fertility has since shrunk to just 1.6 births per woman, increased life expectancy, and large amounts of immigration from Latin America and Asia over the past 50 years has allowed the U.S. to become the third most populous nation with 334 million residents. But as the baby boomer generation dies off, deaths will eventually outnumber births by an amount immigration can't offset. And thus, the U.S. population will peak at 370 million residents in 2080. Number two, China. From 1947 until April of this year, China was the most populous nation. In fact, it's so populated that despite being around the same size as the US, it has more than a billion more residents. Why? Because it's the world's oldest continuous civilization. By 1 AD, 65 million people, or 30% of all humans, lived in China. And by 1200, that number was 140 million, or 28% of the world's population. Of course, the Mongol invasions of the 13th century, which killed 40 million Chinese, wreaked havoc on the population, but it recovered again to 140 million by the 17th century. The ensuing 300 years of peace resulted in China attaining 430 million residents by 1900 and 542 million by 1949, then passing the British Empire to become the most populous nation. Now, the Great Leap Forward of 1958 to 1962 did lead to the deaths of 45 million Chinese. Chinese. But the fertility rate in this largely agrarian society was still 6.5 births per woman. So when China finally got food production under control, life expectancy shot up from just 40 years in 1960 to 65 by 1980, and the population soared, becoming the first ever country to surpass 1 billion residents in 1982. China's one-child policy from 1980 until 2016, however, along with the most rapid development and industrialization of any nation in history, drastically reduced the fertility rate to just 1.09 births per woman. Meaning, China's population of 1.412 billion is actually shrinking. Number 1. India. Despite being one-third its size, India just surpassed China to become the most populous nation. And just like China, it's always been populated, due to the nation having the most total arable land on Earth. By 1000 AD, the population was 79.5 million, or 30% of all humans. And by 1800, that number grew to over 200 million. And since the average fertility rate for the next 150 years was over 6 births per woman, the population reached 361 million by 1950. The Green Revolution of the 1960s and 70s, which improved food security and sanitation, markedly increased the life expectancy from just 35 years in 1950 to 72 years today. And as such, India's population exploded and continues to. But while India is projected to reach 1.67 billion residents by 2050, which would be greater than the US and China's populations in 2050 combined, have you ever wondered what the most populous states in 2050 will be? If so, there's a video on screen now. Go check it out.